So we've been talking through this idea of analysis of competing hypotheses, which is a technique used by the US intelligence community to help counter confirmation bias. And the idea is that you, uh, in trying to answer a question about what's going on in the world, you put forward a variety of hypotheses and you consider how the evidence lines up or doesn't line up with each of those hypotheses. And that helps us to prevent the common sort of analytic trap of choosing our preferred hypothesis or our preferred explanation and then just stacking up information behind it not recognizing that that information might actually support other hypotheses as well and while the technique is really uh, powerful it's not the most intuitive um, to apply and so i think it's it's worth going through and doing an illustration of how this could work and what this would actually look like and the example i'll be using is drawn from a book by morgan d jones called the thinker's toolkit which is really fantastic and I encourage folks to buy it and read it. There's a lot of excellent techniques in here, but there's also this case study of the burnt bread. And so there's some, some basic facts that Jones lays out about this case. Um, this is about a, a bakery where three batches of bread were overbaked or burnt. Um, and the owner of the bakery is trying to figure out what happened here and why was that. Uh, there are a couple other facts that um, only specially prepared bread was overbaked. Um, only two of the ovens overbaked the bread. Uh, the maintenance man came in and checked to see if there's anything wrong with the heat gauges and couldn't find anything. Uh, the overbaking took place during the bakery's business, busiest season of the year. Employees seemed to be unhappy over benefits. Employees seemed to be angry over the firing of another employee, Menendez. Uh, Frank was seen talking with Menendez in the parking lot, so there seems to be some intrigue going on and the flour deliveries from the new supplier were delayed. So we've got these sort of various different pieces of information that were sort of floating around in this case, and we're trying to figure out sort of what is going on here with this. And so Joan says, well, there's a couple possible explanations or hypotheses, right? So it's possible, given that sort of preliminary run through the evidence, that the employees were sabotaging the bread, that they were overburning the bread, that they did something that caused that to happen. Um, it's also possible that the ovens were malfunctioning, probably the gas gauge was letting too much gas in and the ovens were burning too hot, or maybe it was just fluctuations in gas pressure. Maybe it wasn't necessarily the, the gauge in the oven, but something about the line and that's what was driving it. And so we have these three hypotheses and we're gonna think about each of those pieces of evidence to see how they line up with um, each of those hypotheses. And I'm not gonna talk through everything with this. Um, you can certainly pause if you want and kind of you know do the calculations yourself. Um, but if we have, we'll start with that sort of first row, three batches of bread were overbaked. Okay, could sabotage by, account, uh, by employees account for that? Yes, it absolutely could. So we're gonna put a C there to indicate that that piece of evidence, three batches of bread, is consistent with employees sabotaging bread. Um, malfunctioning of uh, the oven's gas gauges, could that produce the overbaked bread? Yes, it could. Uh, C, consistent fluctuations in the gas pressure that could also produce the overbaked bread. Um, so that one's fully consistent. Likewise, only specially prepared bread was overbaked. Is it possible the employees would have only, you know, targeted the specially prepared bread? Sure, they could have, they could have targeted that. Um, so C's all the way across on that one as well. Uh, but then the third piece of evidence is a little bit different. Only two ovens overbaked bread, right? So the sabotage by employees, could they have sabotaged bread in two ovens? Yes, they could have. Um, could the ga gas gauges on those two ovens be malfunctioning? Sure, but there's only one gas line coming in. And if that gas line was not providing enough pressure or was providing too much pressure, it would have affected all three ovens. And so that piece of evidence seems to point against the idea of the gas pressure in the line being the driving factor and so we'd flag that it's inconsistent right and so we could go through and look for other bits of inconsistent evidence like the maintenance man checked the gauges and found that they were fine which would suggest that maybe it's sabotaged by the employees uh that's that's driving this whole thing um because that's the one that has all of the consistent evidence behind it uh whereas the other two at least have, have one piece of inconsistent information driving it. But in the process of going through this, we might also want to refine our hypotheses or we wanna refine our, our evidence matrix and maybe add in additional information when we start asking different questions. And so one of the questions um, that might pop up 
is with that last piece of evidence that flower deliveries from new suppliers were delayed, um, that maybe something was going on with the flower, that it was it was a little bit different than, um, than, than flower that had been used before. Maybe the flower itself was defective. And so we can add in an additional hypothesis that's suggested by the data we just need to go through and score that appropriately, right? So we've got three batches of bread that are overbaked. Could the flour have accounted for that? Yes, it could. Um, only specially prepared bread was overbaked. Could the flour have accounted for that? Yes, it could. Um, in fact, we can go through the list and find that the defective flour can account for pretty much everything in uh, of the evidence that we have, and now suddenly seems as equally likely as sabotage by employees, right? And so if you are just sort of reporting this out, you might sort of say, well, we have two hypotheses and they both seem consistent with all the evidence, but we have been able to rule out plausibly the gas pressure and the gauges as the cause of this. But if you go to the baker and say that, the baker is clearly wanna, going to wanna know, um, you know which of those two hypotheses it actually is. And so you can again, go back out and get some more information and here I've added uh, one more piece of evidence, another row in our matrix uh, that notes that only batches made with the new flour overbaked. And that seems to point pretty strongly toward the flour being defective. And we can, we can work the matrix as we normally would, right? Sabotage by employees. Would the employees only have sabotaged bread where this new flour had been mixed in? Well, I suppose it's possible, but that actually seems pretty unlikely. Um, that they would only target bread with a new flour when there are other batches that could have been targeted as well. Um, would ovens have only, um, gauges only have malfunctioned with flour that was from this new batch? Well, probably not. I can't imagine what the gauge knows about the flour. Um, gas pressure likewise wouldn't account for only batches with this new flour being overbaked, but the flour being defective certainly would account for that. So we've now got this other piece of information in, in the mix that we've been able to add in as we sort of try to refine and explore these hypotheses a little bit more. But when we go to actually simplify things down, most of the evidence that we have is actually not useful because most of the evidence that we have is consistent with all of those hypotheses and doesn't really tell us anything. In fact, when we're trying to come to a conclusion about which of these hypotheses is most likely, there's really only three pieces of evidence that are relevant. Only two of the ovens overbake, overbake the bread, which helps us rule out the gas pressure. The maintenance person came along and said the heat gauges look good, helps us to rule out the malfunctioning of the gauges. And the fact that the flour, um, the, the bread that overbaked was using the flour that came late uh, is something that seems really hard to square with which batches got burnt and which didn't in terms of sabotage by employees, but it does seem to support the idea that the flour is defective. So really, in spite of all of that evidence that we managed to assemble, there's only three pieces that really help us to differentiate which of these hypotheses is stronger than the others. And Jones concludes that it was likely the flour that was the cause of this um, overbaking of bread and it was less likely to be the case that it was the employees sabotaging it. And it seems very unlikely that it was either the gas gauges or the uh, gas line that was causing this. And this is again, I think how the analysis of competing hypotheses is supposed to work is that you don't simply say, aha, I have the answer. You say, well, the evidence seems to be pointing us pretty strongly to this hypothesis, but these other hypotheses also exist and I think they're either stronger or weaker in in different respects and can explain what maybe points you away from those as being stronger and maybe allows you to give a assessment of the strength of those other hypotheses as weak or as unlikely to be the case uh, that again helps us to avoid that confirmation bias uh, i have lots of information i just stack it up behind a particular hypothesis and we can very easily find evidence that helps support our hypotheses when we go out looking for it actively. For example, employees being disgruntled and talking in the parking lot um, is something that may seem like a relevant piece of information if you're just trying to find evidence that employees were sabotaging the bread, but it's evidence that doesn't necessarily help you distinguish between whether it's the gas gauges or the employees. It's just something that we've been able to add on to our 
pre-existing belief and expectations. And so the analysis of competing hypotheses ends up being a very useful method. Uh, it's a little bit involved, um, but hopefully this illustration highlights how we can sort of add and adjust um, hypotheses, we can add and adjust evidence, and how at the end of the day we need to get rid of all of the evidence that is consistent with all of our hypotheses because it isn't actually helping us to, to hone in on which answers are more likely than others.